Okay, welcome back. Um, now I'm doing question number six from the specimen paper for the IGCSE um, 2020, the new syllabus. This is the specimen paper for it. And this question sits from the paper four. Okay, now here we're told about this rectangle. Um, o, P, Q, R. O, P, Q, R. So we know that it's a rectangle. So some of these words are very important. So the properties of a rectangle will come into play here. Okay, so for example, we know from that one statement that O, R and P, Q, R are parallel lines. And O, P and R, Q are parallel lines. And you know, O, R is equal to P, Q. And O, P is equal to R, Q. For in, in vectors, those kind of pieces of information are very important. Okay, and then it says M is a midpoint of RQ and PT um, to TQ is 2 to 1. So the ratio, not the length, I'm just putting a 1 here and a 1 here just to show the ratios, not to show the lengths. And this is like two parts and this is like one part. So it doesn't mean this is the same as that. I'm just writing this just to show the ratios of the lengths, that's all. Okay, I'm not writing a length, they're just ratios, just for my, for my information. Then it says OP is a vector P, which is marked, and OR is a vector R, which is marked. So we got to find, in terms of P and or R, in its simplest form, M to Q. So we got to find the vector from M to Q, M to Q, which is over here. Now, we know that M to Q is a half of um, the length from R to Q, because it's M is the midpoint. Okay, so the vector from R to Q is the same as the vector from O to P, because as we mentioned, this is a rectangle, and the opposite sides are equal and parallel um, to each other. So if two vectors are parallel, they can be expressed in terms of each other. And if they're equal, then of course they're going to be exactly the same. If they're equal in length and parallel, they will be can be called the same vector. So M to Q is a half of R to Q, which is a half of O to P, which is going to be a half of P. So M to Q is a half of P. There's not really any steps you need to show for that particular part. It's pretty much simple. So it's a half of P, M to Q. Then it says M to T, the vector from M to T. Now, for, for me to get from, to, from M to T, I've got to go from M to Q and then from Q to T. So I'll write that down here. So M to T is going from M to Q plus Q to T. Okay, so M to Q I already know. It's this Q to T part. So let me just show the steps of that up here. Now Q to T is basically parallel to, in fact it's along the same line, it's in the same direction as Q to P, but it's some fraction of Q to P. Now the whole line Q to P is made up of three parts. If this is two parts, this is one part. And Q to T makes up one part out of the three. So Q to T is a third of Q to P. In which case, Q to P is equal to the vector minus R, because R is going upwards, O to R, and Q to P is going downwards, so it's going to be the negative, because the direction matters, but it is equal to this vector, because they are opposite sides of a rectangle. So it's equal, because they're parallel lines, but just going in the opposite direction. So that means Q to T is going to be minus a third, of r. Okay, so q to t is minus a third r, so m to q plus q to t is going to be a half p minus a third r. So a half p minus a third r. Notice I'm, I'm underlining the vector to show that it's a vector. Okay, here they have them in bold type. If you can't write in bold type, then you have got to underline it to show that it's a vector. Then it says find the, the vector from o to t. From o up to T. So what we can do is from O to T we can go from O to P and then from P to T. So I'll write that down here. O to T is O to P plus P to T. That's O to P plus P to T. Okay now we know what O to P is. O to P is P, it's given, and P to T is now in the same direction as the vector R but it's two-thirds of the length of vector R. So it's going to be uh, P plus two-thirds of R. P plus two-thirds of R. That's P plus two-thirds R. So O2, there's P plus two-thirds R. Okay, there we have the vector from O to T. Okay, O to T, that's right. Then it says R and 
RQ and OT are extended to meet at U. Is it drawn for us? No, it's not. So let's just do the RQ and OT are extended to meet at U. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, take a copy of the diagram and bring it down here. Okay, so that's the diagram. Um, instead of going up and down all the time to look at the diagram, I've just, put, I've just copied it down here. So it tells us that R to Q is extended. Um, R to Q, RQ and OT are extended until they meet at U. So RQ is extended and OT is also extended until they meet at the point U. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Just slightly short. Okay, until they meet at the point U. Okay, so that's what it means. So sometimes it says RQ and QT, Q and, and OT, OT are produced. That's like old style English where they say they are produced until they meet at U. It means they are extended. Uh, now they are kind of gone a bit modern on us. So they meet at U. Right, so if you see some old questions from old, older type of books and papers, you'll see the word produced instead of extended. It means exactly the same thing. So RQ is extended and OT is extended until they meet together at U. Find the position vector of U in terms of P and R giving your or give your answers in its simplest form so uh, form sorry so the first thing you got to realize is it says position vector now what does the word position vector mean well the, the word position vector means the position of a point with respect to the origin so whenever you see a question that says uh, position vector there will always be an o in the question so that is considered the origin if there's, a, if there's a pair of axes, the O would be the origin like of the axis. If it's a diagram like this, the origin would be where the letter O is. So the position vector of U means the vector from O to U. That's what it means. How to get from O to U. Okay, so we've got to work out how to, to um, find this vector from O to U. Okay, so what we can do is we can go from O to R and then from R to Q. And then from Q to U. But we've got to work out what this what this vector is from Q to U. Okay? And we could do this by some sort of um, process of, I guess, similarity. Okay? Because uh, what it is, is these two triangles are similar triangles. This angle is the same as this angle. This angle is 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. So these two angles must be the same. So they're definitely similar triangles. And the ratio of this length... To that length is 2 to 1. The ratio of this length to that length is 2 to 1. Okay, so the length from this point here, which is T. Let me just uh, make that clearer. That's a T there. Okay, the, 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 I'll just put T here. Okay, that the, the length from O to T is a half of the length from P to T. That means the length of what we could say is um, O to T is twice the length of t to u so you can say o to t is twice um, t to u the vector o to t is twice the length of t to u from similar triangles okay all right so we already found what o to t are is did we not yes we've found what o to t is so what we can do is we know that therefore t to u is going to be a half of o to t Okay, so if I want to go from O to U, so O to U is going to equal O to T plus a half of O to T. Okay, so you've got to go from O to T, and then you've got to go another half, because this length is twice this length. This length is twice that length. Okay, so it's like 3 over 2, 3 over 2 times O to T. All right, and the reason why I know that this length is twice that length is because these two triangles, O T U and um, P T Q P T P T O, are similar triangles because these are vertically opposite; they're the same. These are both ninety. That means the third angle must be the same. If you have a uh, two triangles which have the same angles in them exactly, then they are similar triangles, and the lengths are in the same ratio. So I know that this is two. This is this this compared to that. This is twice as long as that. That means this hypotenuse must be twice as long as that hypotenuse. So if O to T is um, P plus th two two thirds R, then T to U must be a half of that. Okay. So basically, O to O to U is three over two times O to T. So I can now just I know that O to T is P plus two thirds. So that's going to be three over two 
times P plus two thirds R. And we have to now just simplify that. So that's going to give me three over two P plus and the three third, three, three over two and the two thirds cancel out. Three over two P plus R. And there's our answer. And what you can do to, to make sure that you have not made a mistake, you can kind of like track your answer. So if I want to go from O to U, if I go 3 over 2 P, it's like I've got to go P plus an extra half of P, and then plus R, you can see it's taking me to the right place. So you can kind of track your answer and see, does it actually take me to the right place? Because if you did something wrong, you made a mistake and you had like, you know, minus p plus something then you're like oh, hold on I'm, I'm i'm over here i'm supposed to be over there but three from starting from o that's p plus a half of p that's three over two p plus r you can see it's taking me to the right place it's always good to check to see if you have um you know got a sensible answer by tracking your answers so for even for example here a half p minus a third r from m to t okay a half p minus a third r starting from m a half p minus a third r it looks like it's correct you can just track it you see so that's how you kind of like work it out like o to t p plus two thirds r p plus two thirds r kind of works out takes us to the right place okay now for the next part of the question next page where are we Okay, now part C. It says M to T is equal to 2K minus K, and the magnitude of M to T is uh, root 180. We don't actually need to look at the diagram here. Basically, the magnitude of a vector is, if you have the magnitude of a vector A, B, it's going to be basically the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, so if this is the case, then we can say the magnitude of M T is equal to the square root of 2k squared plus minus k squared. So the magnitude of mt is equal to, that's the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared, that's 5 squared, 5, sorry, 5k squared, that's 4k squared plus k squared, that's 5k squared. So we can say that the square root of 5k squared is equal to the square root of 180. We can get rid of the, the square roots you can say that means 5k squared is equal to 180. So k squared is equal to 180 divided by 5. So k squared is equal to 5 into, that goes 3 times, that's 36. Therefore k is equal to plus or minus 6, but we want the positive value of k, so therefore k is equal to just 6. So k is equal to 6. Only write the positive value, don't write plus or minus in your final answer, otherwise you will lose marks. Okay, so that's how you find the magnitude of a vector. That's what this means, the magnitude, the length of the line of the vector. That's what it means. Okay, so uh, to find it, you're basically using Pythagoras by finding the square root, because this is the, like the shorter sides. So like, for example, if this is 2k, and this is minus k, and this is m, and this is t, then what you're finding is the length of this line. So using Pythagoras, these are the shorter sides, the, Pythagor the, the hypotenuse, is found by finding the square root of the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. That's exactly what we just did there. And we know that's equal to 180. So then we can continue and answer the question. And that's part C done. And I think that was the end of this particular question. Uh, to find the next question or other questions on this paper, you click on the playlist that will appear here. To find other questions about vectors, click on the playlist that's going to be somewhere around here and to to link to the uh, or to subscribe to the channel you can you know press this particular icon over here thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video